Welcome guys to another episode. I don't know why I always do this. Today what we're planning to do is a pond using Diana Wallstad's method, dirt on the bottom. On top, we're going to put an uh, inch to inch and a half of gravel. Do you really need a cameo? And the next part is I don't have all my tools with me here. So I'm literally going to use like kitchen tools and stuff that doesn't really help with aquascaping but we're gonna push through and for the plants i have rotala indica uh limnifil limnifil uh hydrocodo i have uh hydrocodo japan specifically I have sagittaria and uh what's the last thing i got i think that's about it if i do remember i'll tell you guys later we're setting up a pond a miniature pond is this, is this actually small? So with this pond, what I wanted to do is... So with this pond... Can you stop coughing? I'm recording over here. On the bottom, we're gonna lay down organic soil, which I have here. That's one I've seen a lot online. And we're gonna use that. We'll probably do two to three inches on the very bottom of our pot. And, um... I know people usually sift this, but this brand I find is to be super fine. Alright, now we're gonna wet the soil just to get rid of all of the oxygen bubbles or any space that or gaps that might be in the soil. Uh, the reason for that is later on if you flood the pond, what's gonna happen is if you don't do that all the soil might start coming up and you have to kind of like clean the whole entire tank or pond and that's going to be a nuisance so let's do that you're not really supposed to use these but <laughs> i don't have any legit gloves We're gonna throw gravel on top just to cap it off so it doesn't seep nutrients in water 24 7 right off the bat which i have here i don't even know why i gotta show you guys gravel but since i got it <laughs> since i got it i'm gonna show it to you so i have that rinse oh no again this gravel is uh pre-rinsed So next up, we're gonna add the, the chlorinated water. You gotta be careful with this step. I'm really ill prepared for this one. But basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pour it onto my hand. Oh, f Yeah, don't do that, messed up. If you don't have a net, use <laughs> one of these. Don't tell my girlfriend though. And then we get a plant. Um, what I have here is, well, these are plant trimmings I got from today. I have a couple of snails in here too. And with the planting, my idea was since this is a round pond, I'm gonna put the focus kind of in the middle. So all of the tall growing plants, like the Cecilflora, the Botala will be in the middle and all of these small plants will be on the side so you know how you go foreground mid ground background foreground would be the outer circle the mid ground would be the inner circle and the background will kind of be like the very dead center so that's how we're gonna plant let's give it a try i don't have tweezers so we're gonna use chopsticks looks a little bit cloudy but you know we'll see how this grows right now this is day one I can't see a thing <laughs> I can't see a thing in there wow that was that was actually a good amount of work I actually prefer doing aquarium like glass tanks where you can see what you're doing versus looking at a pond from top and every time you touch the water it ripples and you can't see nothing my idea is to update you guys on the pond that I am planning to keep throughout. God damn it, why? Every single time I record, why? All 
All right, so this is what day two looks like for our pond. There's some bugs on the surface, which is expected. Um, once we get some fishes in here, that should be totally okay. All right guys, so a couple of weeks ago, I started the pond experiment, the outdoor pond experiment. I was planning to put fish in here, but the, uh, the fish won't be arriving until next month. And uh, the fish is going to be Japanese rice fish. Those are kind of hard to get, especially during quarantine. So I figured I'd give you an update two, two weeks plus since I planted this pond and set this whole thing up. Uh, and since then, I did a couple of water changes. Uh, I think the plants are doing okay. Uh, I'll give you guys a good look into what is going on in the pond. And since then, I've added a few more things in the pond. And I think they're doing not bad. So we will see. It's a little bit dirty on the front because it was really windy these few days. So I'm pretty sure Mother Nature blew a bunch of dirt in here. But inside you'll see I added a rim of hydrocodal around it. Um, and the original rotile looks like it's growing pretty good. The stems started turning red. I can see the leaves getting a little bit reddish, which is kind of cool. You know, I think that's a good sign because the rotala is getting a decent amount of light. Sunlight for part of the day and indirect light for the remaining part of the day. You'll see uh, added kabomba. You kind of see new growth there. Do you see it? My only problem with this is the duckweed that I've added. Um, I think they've grown since I've added these. I don't remember being this many, especially I see a bunch of little baby leaves. But they are a little bit light in color. And again, this is supposed to be a low tech or, or even no tech. And my plan was to add nothing and just let it sit and just let it grow. Oh, I do see new leaf growth right there for the hydrocodo. You see it? Right there, little baby leaves right there, right there, right there. So that's great. I kind of decorated the outside of the pond, not the inside of the pond, with a whole bunch of stones. Plan was to use that inside of the pond, but I figured it would be kind of cool using it outside. And originally, I've added snails. They're still alive. And I think they're getting bigger too. So that's always a good sign. Probably do another update in a couple of weeks. And after that, probably another update after I drop the, uh, the Japanese rice fish in there. All right guys, that wraps it up for another episode of Tanktastic. So I'll catch you on the next one.